To write the names or formulas for chemical compounds, the first step is to determine what type of compound you have. Once you know the type of compound, you can apply the rules for that compound. There are a number of different types of compounds. We'll focus primarily on the ones needed to be successful in a general chemistry course. We're not going to discuss the rules for naming or formula writing in this video, just how to tell the type of compound. Let's start with ions. If you have a plus or minus next to the element symbol, that's an ion. For the names, it'll have the word ion written after the name. Sometimes you'll have a group of atoms with a charge. That's called a polyatomic ion. Poly means many. The names will often end in eight or eight. So those are the ions. So pause for a second and identify which of the following here are ions. You should have selected NH4 plus and N3 minus because those are the ones with charges. Whenever we have a metal and a nonmetal, it's an ionic compound. Metals are on the left of the periodic table and nonmetals are on the right. Don't worry too much about the metalloids. So there are a few types of ionic compounds that you need to recognize. If we have a metal and only one type of nonmetal, it's binary ionic. So you could have CaCl2 and you'd have a metal, calcium, and then the only other type of nonmetal there is chlorine. For the name, you'll see something like calcium chloride, aluminum oxide, and so on. Pause for a moment and determine which of the following here are binary ionic compounds. H2O consists of a nonmetal and a nonmetal, so it's not ionic. And the same goes for CO2. We have two nonmetals. The only binary ionic compound is lithium nitride, Li3N. Ternary ionic compounds are when we have a polyatomic ion attached to a metal. We've already seen polyatomic ions, so we'll end up with formulas like CaCO3, NaNO3, or MgSO4. We'll have more than two different types of elements in a ternary ionic compound. And the names will look something like calcium carbonate, sodium nitrate, or magnesium sulfite. Sometimes for ionic compounds, we have a transition metal attached to the nonmetal. This is important to recognize because transition metals can have different charges. So when we write the names, they'll often look like iron 3 sulfate, copper 2 chloride, or lead 4 sulfate. And the formulas will look like Fe2, parentheses SO4, parentheses 3, or CuCl2. Note that we can have both binary and ternary ionic compounds with transition metals. So pause and select the ionic compounds below that have transition metals. You should have selected copper sulfate, the Cu is a transition metal, and then iron 3 chloride. That 3 tells you that the charge on the iron is plus 3. We'll wrap up with molecular compounds. That's where we have a nonmetal bonded to a nonmetal. The formulas, they'll look like CO2, N2O5, or CCL4. The names will use prefixes to show the number of each type of element. For example, carbon dioxide, dinitrogen pentoxide, or carbon tetrachloride. Pause for a moment and identify the compounds below that are molecular. Since Na is a metal, that cannot be a molecular compound, which is made up of two nonmetals. Carbon monoxide, we have two nonmetals, and that mono in front of monoxide, that gives us a good hint that it's molecular. And finally, SO3, sulfur and oxygen are nonmetals, so that SO3 is a molecular compound. One last type of compound is the organic compound, and that's when you have primarily carbons and hydrogens that make up the compound. It's a special type of molecular compound. So now you can tell what type of compound you have, and that's for the first step to naming or writing the formula for chemical compounds. The next step is to get lots of practice using the rules specific to each type of compound. You can get that practice on my website using the Naminator. I encourage you to do so. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.